Now, I'm no daredevil, but back at the station, they told me this is the kind of story that demands reporter involvement, getting your feet wet, so to speak. So here goes on the water slide, the stand-up style. Hey yo, what's up dorks? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do something a little bit differently. Today I wanted to go over the past, the present, and the future of the Lake Dolores water park. It might be a new series if I can get a hold of more interest, and maybe more places I can check out, but in the meantime, let's get right into it. Many of us love to go to Vegas. Some of us extremely love Vegas and others go for a few drinks out in the town at the city of sin. But if you're a resident of California, more importantly, LA, you may drive down Interstate 15 in the Mojave Desert and find a lot of interesting things along the way. Some of my personal favorites include Zizek's Road, a funny looking road name that made me do a double take, remnants of Route 66, long stretches of desert, and lastly, a little abandoned park by the name of Lake Dolores Water Park. Lake Dolores was open to the public in May of 1962, and at first was just a place for the extended family of the owner, Bob Byers. The park opened with a few attractions and a 273 acre man-made lake fed by underground springs. Later on, a basic campground right next to the lake was open to the public. Motocross enthusiasts and people traveling on Interstate 15 between Los Angeles and Las Vegas made sure business was booming. Throughout 1962 all the way to the late 1980s, the park would see more attractions such as the Zip Cord, the Big Bopper, the Lazy River, bumper boats, swimming pools, and many more. Accounts from then would say that the park was very lax and friendly. Safety regulations were less of a thing back then, and the park was more open and free to the guest. One great example was the V-shaped water slides, which were ridden standing up. The slides ended at about 15 feet above the water, shooting the standing rider out at the end like a human cannonball with speeds up to 50 miles per hour. Things were crazy back then. I can see now why they call the snowflakes. Anyways, at the end of the decade, things were looking too great. Peak attendance was in the early 70s and mid 80s, but by the late 80s, attendance crawled to a halt and the owners decided to close the park, ending the name of the Lake Dolores Water Park. After the closure of Lake Dolores, the original owner, Byers, sold the park in August of 1990 to Lake Dolores Group, LLC who envisioned a more polished park with the 1950s theme. In 1995, the original water slides on the hill were removed to make room for new installations and the park reopened under a new name, Rockahula, on July 4th, 1998. An on-premise RV park had been planned, but its opening was delayed and it never completed. Sadly, a big oasis resort in the desert did not entice a lot of customers like it did in the past and the park amassed three million dollars in debt. The owners of the park experienced some financial hardships as well, but the park continued on. But the straw that broke the camel's back was when an employee was crippled in a 1999 accident and was awarded 4.4 million dollars in damages. Sadly, the park filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in February of 2000. I don't want to go too much into detail of the accident, it is public knowledge after all, but the accident was the sign of worse times to come for the park. Not just financially, but reputation wise, as we later see in the early to late 2000s. Interestingly enough, the court appointed trustee failed to find a buyer and in August 2000, the bankruptcy filing was charged to a chapter 7 liquidation. The bankruptcy judge overseeing the case returned the property to Dolores Byers, husband Bob Byers died in 1996, with most debts discharged. Dolores Byers sold the property in September 2001 to SL Investment Group LLC of the City of Industry, California. But unfortunately she died a month later, bless her soul. 
After a $400,000 renovation, the water park reopened in May of 2002 under a new name, Discovery Water Park. In 2002 and 2003, the park was opened on weekends. During the last season of operation in the summer of 2004, the park operated intermittently. The park has been closed since the summer of 2004. Interestingly enough, while digging for more information on Discovery Park, I found an album on Flickr posted by Chris Barris from a trip he took there in October of 2003, months before the closure, and if you look on the screen, it is a world's away of what it looked like in the past and how it will look like in its new abandoned future. So, what do you do now? You've been closed nearly three times and from the handoff to handoff from owner to owner, you've always seemed to get out and attract those young folks and tourists. Let's see what your future holds. In 2003, you were almost bought by former professional football player Ron Brown and the Pro Players Network to turn you into a camp for disadvantaged youths. But the plan didn't go through. The future was looking grim, but you were hopeful that you were going to be rebought and opened. But things started getting worse. Some of the park installations were sold off. The Big Bopper water slide was dismantled and shipped to Canada. It would later become the Colossal Canyon at Cultus Lake Water Park. You sat there and took it as people vandalized you and destroyed you to find metals and wires from your building. Urban explorers visited the park as they ignored the no trespassing signs. But later down the years, you seemed to enjoy that, since once again, drivers heading to and from Las Vegas to Los Angeles once again visited you. On a serious note, some cool and noteworthy things that happened throughout the closure. In March 2008, the park appeared in an episode of reality shows Robin Big on MTV, doing stunts in the abandoned park. In 2011, a group called Oasis Theme Park announced the project to renovate and reopen the park, but this effort has failed. In June 2012, another skate film, Killian Martian, showed the park in its current state while reflecting on its past appearance. Might have to give that one a watch later. In 2013, Truster Corpse, a group of artists from New York City, transformed the park into Trustoland as an artistic statement by repainting many signs and buildings with unusual images and messages. And on September 30th, 2014, the park was used by Top Gear America as an obstacle course in Season 5, Episode 7, What Can It Take? Everything was looking fine up until the fateful day in mid-October when the abandoned park was the victim of a fire and many of the remaining buildings, including the Lazy River Cafe and Arcade, were burned to the ground. After this, security officers were engaged to protect the property. So, here we are in today, where the park sits abandoned, right next to Interstate 15, creating somewhat of a beautiful eyesore. She has seen better days, and better days are to come, but the abandoned park has found new residents and a new life in the wake of her closure. As mentioned before, many urban explorers like myself has seen this abandoned park as a new area to explore and document while other non-desirables use it as a place of havoc and destruction. While on my trip there, I tried to take as many pics as I could and try to tie it with an older folder of the past and get a present and past look. Many of the surrounding buildings are either heavily damaged or destroyed, and most of the area has been graffitied. I honestly don't mind the graffiti, it doesn't damage anything in an abandoned place like this, and many have come to either represent their hometown or show off their creative side. The ones that I despise are those that come to places like these and want to destroy it or do harm. It honestly gives us a bad name and it only prevents us from truly preserving a place like this. I'll let the photos go on and hopefully you guys can appreciate them. 
If you folks want to see them in their own uncompressed file, check out the links below. You guys are probably saying to yourselves, what now? Where do you go from a place once teeming with life to ashes and dust in the middle of nowhere? Where does one recover from that? Well, I've got some good news for once. In, our, in an article from The Sun, it goes, plans to restore the abandoned water park along the 15 freeway to Las Vegas are moving forward. The 267 acre project which aims to redevelop the former Lake Dolores water park in an unincorporated community of Newberry Springs, was approved by the San Bernardino County Board of Supervisors Tuesday, March 24, 2020. Supervisors approved a general plan amendment and a conditional use permit for the project. But it doesn't end there. In an article from Route 66 News, it reads, The Victor Valley News reported According to a newsletter from Robert Lovingood's office, the board on Tuesdays unanimous approved a general plan, amendment, and conditional use permit to establish a water park, recreational vehicle park, lake, and development of approximately 100,281 square feet of office and commercial buildings. The project is to be developed in five phases over five years at the 267-acre property. Well, there you have it, folks. News as recently as of March 2020 had came up for the park and I truly believe new life will be bestowed on this once bustling water park. My main concern however is trying to keep a the park float again if it's just an oasis resort in the middle of nowhere. Anyways guys thanks for watching this video took a while and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I was on my way back from Las Vegas and I just had to try to get some few shots with my camera and I fell in love with this place and I wanted to make a video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to smash that mother trucking like button and if you want to see more, subscribe, I guess, maybe, who knows, who cares. Anyways, hope you guys have a good one and don't forget to tip your waitresses. Uh, P.S. on the last note, I didn't want to mention this, but uh, I'm feeling kind of inclined to do it anyways. Um, so, <laughs> it's kind of funny or a little embarrassing. I hope you guys won't laugh. But I kind of want to do a little Easter egg, a little hunt. While I was there, I found a USB drive and I put some stuff in there. I'm not going to tell you what the contents are, but let's just say they're in this really scary, ominous looking hole. And if you guys kind of want to find it or kind of want to see what I put in there I, you can go ahead and look for it I don't care dude um, just hit me up and let me know that you found it anyways uh, thanks so much for watching guys and uh, don't go trespassing but uh, even though I probably told you to but uh, don't do it uh, anyways peace